fire. Do you think politicians running on an anti-gun policy have a winning strategy this midterm? Find the poll question on our homepage. Go to Rapid Fire Radio's Twitter page. Search Rapid Fire Radio, all one word on Twitter to find us. And you can answer that poll question too. Is a anti-gun politician, is that their, a winning strategy for them this, this midterm? So anyway, we're talking to Jeff Deal. If you want to ask him a question, it's 508-444-2120. And uh, Jeff, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but we got to pay the bills one way or another. So, uh, uh, But go ahead. Um, I would say uh, we got a lot of people on the chat that are asking, uh, like, what's the wor- number one thing you would do as governor to restore our Second Amendment rights here in Massachusetts? Well, you know, that's such a great question because, again, Maura Healy has been uh, obviously known for her lookalike bill where she the assault rifle ban that that federally went away. But she kept it here in Massachusetts because she said, I think what the quote was, if it looks like one and it shoots like one, it is one an assault rifle, you know. An assault rifle, first of all, I mean, not a defense rifle, an assault rifle. But anyway, you know, the um, what I'd like to see right away is to make sure that we don't lose companies like Smith and Wesson who make the AR-15 supply, uh, you know, our police, our military with those weapons, you know, being forced out of our state. You know, right. they're going down to Tennessee because of partly politics and uh, partly because of Maura Healy. So I'd like to, you know, turn that back. I, I got to tell you that one great thing, though, is the Supreme Court taking some immediate action. I think the red flag laws of Massachusetts have been overturned. And the other thing is the um, uh, the carry uh, law in New York state, I think, applies now to states like Massachusetts. And I think that should eliminate the suitability clause um, that re- currently keeps us from being able to get a gun license if just one person unilaterally decides you shouldn't get it. That being your, your local uh, police chief. So, you know, I think there's already some good gains that have happened uh, because of having Supreme Court justices that were appointed under Trump that have given us more of our freedoms back with the Second Amendment. But I look forward to working with sportsmen and the um, groups like Goal here in Massachusetts to um, talk about where we can, you know, again, roll back or advance some of the things that I think gun owners, legal gun owners would like to see um, modified in Massachusetts because, you know, you talk to hunters, for example, um, losing a, losing a one day, a weekend, um, for hunting, you know, bothers them obviously with short and short, uh, hunting seasons. Those are things that make sense to me. And, uh, mm. again, I think most gun owners, every gun owner in Massachusetts that's licensed feels like it's, it's important to make sure that the bad guys don't have the guns and let's make sure we enforce the laws that are on the books as well. Bartley yeah. Fox. So these are just some of the things obviously as governor, I want to protect those rights. Yeah. Amen to all that. And, uh, you know, one of the things that um, I've noticed as well is in Massachusetts, we like to tout nationally how we have very strict gun laws and that translates into a low crime rate. But actually, just the opposite is true. If you look at Massachusetts as in, in a snapshot of the Northeast, we are the most violent state in the Northeast. And um, Jim Wallace from Gun Owners Action League just had a did an article and studied that since the enact, enactment of the assault weapons ban, how actually Massachusetts has become more violent and not safer. And Massachusetts gun laws are actually doing a disservice to the good people of the state. Uh, when you look at Maine, New Hampshire, and Vermont, right to our north, which are all constitutional carry states, and all three of them, the cities in those states, I think it's Burlington, uh, it's uh, Portland, and I forget if it's Manchester or one of the other uh, cities, it might be Nashua in, in New Hampshire, that are in the top 10 safest cities in America. And they are constitutional carry states. So that flies in the face of what we like to tout as safe gun laws in this state. Really, we're making our, our citizens less safe in this state by the uh, war on, on uh, you know, the gun owner in this state. Well, the other thing, Toby, is that, you know, despite the fact that it's a election year and a lot of Democrat politicians on Beacon Hill are, are walking back there, uh, defunding the police talk because it's election time, you know, they really actually still believe that in their hearts. The uh, the recent post legislation is basically an attempt to weed out police officers they don't think should be there. And to be honest with you, 
There's a lot of uh, law enforcement officers, state police, because of the vaccine mandate, lost their job or took an early retirement. We are understaffed with police officers at the state level. We are understaffed at every municipal um, police officer uh, right now. Our state's probably the weakest it's been in decades uh, with law enforcement protection. And so that's just another reason why your Second Amendment right to stand your ground and protect yourself is so important. And uh, great points by you about the other New England states that do have that low crime rate because people know uh, that Second Amendment means that people will be protecting their property and their rights and their lives. Mm. Uh, yeah, amen. And, you know, gun control fails every time it's tried, as far as I'm concerned. Look at the cities of our nation that have the strictest gun controls. You got New York, you got Detroit, you got Chicago, you got, you know, constant uh, stream of violent crime in these areas that are oftentimes the hardest place for a citizen to acquire and purchase a gun to protect themselves, not to mention the racial in implications of these gun laws. You want to talk about equity and you want to talk about, um, you know, helping minority communities uh, be safer. Well, you shouldn't prohibit them from getting a gun. You should make it easier for them to get a gun, make it easier for uh, good people to acquire a firearm to protect themselves. But instead, we think by some strange reason that uh, we can we can bypass logic and and go straight to guns are bad as as my mantra and it's going to make everything better and i think just by simply putting up like gun free zone signs that shows how how much of an epic failure that type of logic has been over in the 20 year history in our country um well and when you when you villainize gun ownership to an extent, you also make it so that, you know, you, you create an attitude that you shouldn't even teach the next generation about gun safety or gun usage or hunting or things like that. So, you know, the good news is I know that um, sportsmen's clubs do a great job of trying to get youth involved, uh, train them on, you know, safety and and also on, uh, you know, hunting and, and all that. I mean, I'm an Eagle Scout. So, of course, in scouting, you learn a lot of those uh, things as well. But, you know, as a society, if you continue to villainize it, you're just going to create a problem for the long haul where only bad folks will, will end up getting those things and using them where when good folks should really have them to protect themselves. A mm. couple guys uh, have chimed in on the chat here. And one says, I'm, I'm an independent uh, Trump supporter voting for Deal Allen, Allen and the great Rayla Campbell for Secretary of State. Uh, another one says, uh, Maura Healy's the worst that's happened in Massachusetts. We need common sense, pro Second Amendment. We need Jeff Deal to be the next governor of Massachusetts. And, uh, and Jay McMahon for Attorney General. We absolutely. Throw in Jay McMahon. Absolutely. Jay will protect your Second Amendment rights for sure. Yeah. And, uh, you know, getting back to the Attorney General's position uh, of power, in, in my opinion, I think that um, she had uh, done something that had never been done before, to my knowledge, in this state where. Uh, her expansion of that assault weapons ban redefined the law in and flipped 20 years, almost 20 years of precedent throughout the country and throughout our state and, and unilaterally uh, made it unlawful to purchase and possess commonly owned and in, in ordinary use firearms that are protected under Heller and now reaffirmed as a uh, protected uh, firearm under the Bruin case. Um, and, you know, I would like to see uh, some somebody do something about that. And I know the legislature stood silently in the background and gave her the golf clap and the police, the police and everybody, but she acted as all three branches of government in that one uh, edict that she wrote on January, uh, I'm sorry, on uh, July 20th, 2016, and banned the sale of those enumerated weapons. And, uh, you know, no one's really taken it to task. And I know that some district courts have upheld it uh, with very little evidence being brought to the forefront. Do you, is that something you can do as governor or does that have to go work its way through the court system? Yeah, well, it's the courts and the legislature, uh, the legislature. I mean, what we ideally have is more, uh, you know, folks in the legislature who believe in your Second Amendment, whether, whether that's Republican or Democrat. You know, I think there's plenty of Democrats in Massachusetts that actually believe in, you know, the Second Amendment and gun rights and, and uh, safe gun ownership. But um, unfortunately, that's been drowned out by a very progressive movement that is uh, not only taken over most of our uh congressional delegation down in Washington. I mean, nine congressmen and women, uh, two senators, you know, Elizabeth Warren, Ed Markey, uh, Ayanna Presley. These are these are like the folks that lead the charge against gun owners and um, against the Second Amendment. And they come from Massachusetts. So 
that's why we really don't have a voice federally down in Washington to protect our rights. That's why I feel like it's so important to try to win legislative seats with people, Republican or Democrat, again, who are going to say, I believe in the Second Amendment. You know, you can't have the First Amendment without the Second Amendment. If you want free speech, the right of assembly, you're going to have to be able to, you know, make sure that uh, your citizenry is armed against a tyrannical government. And, you know, the pandemic, I think, really highlighted to us that our rights can be taken away like that and that a governor does have tremendous power over the citizenship. Uh, people were locked down in their homes. Businesses were shut down. Kids were taken out of schools. People were very angry. Uh, I don't ever want to go down that route again. That's not the policy I would have followed. But at the same time, you again, uh, the discussion about potentially disarming citizens uh, in a in the case of a pandemic, I, I think I heard that was a rumor at one point. We, we cannot go down that path. Mm. We cannot. We need legislators to back up a governor that will protect your rights. Yeah, no, 100% right about that. You know, the saying elections have consequences um, really rings true. And uh, I hope to God that we can give you the push you need um, and get you over the line. How can people find your find you and support you in this last week here as we run up to election day? Well, you mentioned my running mate, Leah Allen. She was a state rep with me uh, before. She's a great, great advocate on the Second Amendment. She's a, a gun owner. She's someone uh, who, who I trust. Uh, whenever I have to leave the state, we'll be in, leaving the state in great hands. And uh, she's a friend to, I'm sure, everybody in your store and everybody uh, who's listening to this show. Leah Allen uh, and I both have a website, dealallen.com. So it's D-I-E-H-L-A-L-L-E-N.com. And uh, it's not too late to make a donation. We are still, like I said, putting the TV ads up on the air. The more we can run, the more we can make sure that everybody knows exactly what Maura Haley is all about and what we want to do for the Commonwealth. So it's dealallenforgovernor.com. Is that right? Just just dealallen.com. Dealallen.com. Awesome. Well, let's get you pushed over the edge and get you in the corner office, Jeff. Thanks so much. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. And I'll be casting a vote for you this uh, Tuesday for sure. I'll make be thanking sure. you down at your store in Hyannis soon enough. That'll be Thank awesome. You. And make sure you go to capegunworks.com and use this week's code RIFLE to get a special discount on your entire order. This is a special treat to our radio and podcast listeners. Use RIFLE at capegunworks.com to get your special discount. And don't forget, anything over 300 bucks is free shipping. We'll be right back. This is Rapid Fire.